Let's take a look at the purchases journal. When we look at the purchases journal, we ask ourselves why do we need a purchases journal when we already have a cash payments journal? We've spoken about the CPG, the cash, the CPJ, the cash payments journal. Why would we need a purchases journal? The concept is very much the same as the sales journal where the CPJ only captures and records purchases that have been made for cash. So anything that's been done on credit that the company buys on account will have no immediate impact in cash and therefore we can't use the CPJ to record these pur purchases. So we use a purchases journal. What does it look like? Very much the same as the sales journal. We've got our document number, the day, the details, our folio. In this case, obviously we have in VAT input instead of output because VAT input is the VAT that you can claim on your purchases. So VAT input here is going to be different to our sales journal. In this case, obviously we're dealing with purchases and then instead of debtors controls that we have in sale, we have a creditors control. So this indicates the creditor that I owe. If we take a look at an example, <clears throat> on the 2nd of August, you purchase 5,700 Rand. Again, make sure you're comfortable with the fact that this is VAT inclusive. Goods from best suppliers on P023. So we've got our document number, our day from best suppliers. And then again, when we take a look at our purchases, <clears throat> When you buy someone from something from someone and you want to claim VAT, always make sure that you know what that invoice is. Is it a VAT invoice? In other words, have you been charged VAT? You cannot claim VAT unless you paid the VAT, unless you were charged VAT. So if you buy from a VAT vendor, then absolutely you can calculate the VAT and claim the VAT. But if that person wasn't a VAT vendor, you wouldn't have gotten a VAT invoice and therefore you can't charge or you can't claim that VAT. So we want to be careful about that when we're doing purchases. In this case, the purchase is VAT inclusive, which means you will have a VAT invoice. So 5,700 is the inclusive amount. That is the total that I'm going to have to pay to the creditor. So that represents, again, as with a sale, it represents 114% of the amount. The purchase represents 100% of that amount. That is what I actually wanted. That's all I really wanted was 100% of the amount. But the receiver said, on top of that, I have to pay another 14%. Just the same as I do when I sell stuff, then when they sell stuff to me, they have to charge me an extra 14%. So again, we understand our purchases makes up 100% of the amount. The receiver wants an additional 14% on top of that. So our creditors control becomes 114%. And then posting that, we have our creditors control instead of our debtors control. Creditors control indicates a liability. I'm going to have to actually take 5,700 from my bank account and pay that. Notice the folio amount, the PJ1. In terms of my purchases, I bought 5,000 rands worth of good and notice our VAT input is debited with 700 rand. That indicates that I can actually claim that amount. So this VAT input amount here, you'll see that this is a negative. Well, actually, or this is on the debit side, it will decrease my liability. When we did VAT output, VAT output was credited. So this would actually decrease the amount that I go to pay the receiver. So in terms of my purchases journal, very similar to the sales journal. Just keep in mind that it's VAT input instead of output. You're dealing obviously with your purchases and your creditors control rather than your debtors control. And that's your purchases journal.